thankful for my best for my friends and best friends they have never ever turned on me god forbid because i don't have to clock somebody man my name is chris and this story happened about two years ago in september i was 15 years old and had at the time started a new school i was there for about two weeks and i had yet to make any friends there was another new student that started his name was caleb he was a bit socially awkward but we started talking hanging out together and soon became friends. We both had something in common and being the new kid at school. I hung out with Caleb at school a few times during the weekends. The more time I spent with this dude, Caleb, the more uncomfortable I became around him. He would always speak about strange or depressing topics. He would ask me things like how I will kill somebody and get away with it. That is cluckness manifesting or in the making? No, because I mean, it's, it's the cluckness, the, 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 the cluckiness is already inside of him. It's in his blood. So is manifesting, I want to say that. What, I'm, all right, so I have a question that just popped into my head. What's taking you so long to befriend him? Is that is that is that the right term? Like to unfriend him? What's what's taking you so long? Because I don't like how you're spending just you know I mean so much time with this obviously clucky. Are you? What are you doing? What? Obviously, there's other people in the school. You know. Don't rush your friends. Let them come naturally. Right? Except for except for, you know, Caleb, but just saying. You need to cut all ties with him immediately. You meet like like yesterday. Cause as soon as he was as soon as you realized he was socially awkward, you should have cut off ties. Just said all ties. Every weird question he asked me. He would then tell me in great length and detail what he would do in that situation. God damn! It was like he thought about this stuff all the time. Oh yeah? One weekend I went to Caleb's house for a sleepover. When I arrived at Caleb's house, he was home alone. Caleb? Wait a minute, wait. So after Caleb has told you a lot of clucked up shit, you go to his house for a sleep? Okay. Okay. I can see why you didn't unfriend him because you're either you're turning into him or his cluck teams are rubbing off on you or you're clucky yourself. One, two, and three. Or all three. All three. You're all three. You're either one, you're either two, you're either three. Oh, you're all three. I'm going to say you're all three. You're all three. Jesus. The fire alarm is getting fixed. It's in the working. He never spoke about his mom, and he told me that his dad was always working late, and he wouldn't see him until the morning time. So we ordered pizza, played video games, and watched movies until late at night. I remember looking at the time, and I saw it was 2.40 a.m. I said I was tired, and I told Caleb I wanted to go to sleep. So I went downstairs because I would be sleeping on a fold-out couch, and Caleb would be sleeping in his room. It took some time for me to fall asleep because Caleb kept me awake by walking around upstairs and switching the lights on and off. Oh, no. I remember having an awful dream that I was drowning. And I felt like I was about to... I can, I can, I can just picture... I'm just imagining Caleb just messing with the lights. Just tell my son. All right. Whoa, what? Whoa, why not back? Hold on. What did you say? You said something about die? I remember having an awful dream that I was drowning. And I felt like I was about to die. Wow. 
that's kind of that's kind of weird you know that's a little sus how you have a dream about that and a super duper real life clucky house what the clucky person in the house that's not a coincidence you either gonna get clucked up or come real close i woke up in a panic and caleb had his hands around my throat oh my god see? Was shaking me. see what i'm saying i sat up coughing and struggling to breathe after i sat up caleb asked if i was all right and told me that he came downstairs to get a glass of water and saw it looked like i was having a nightmare so he shook me to wake me up I told Caleb I was fine and I think that's a hell of a waking up. That's a hell of a that's a that's a hell of a thing to do to waste my up. <laughs> Give me up. Caleb went back upstairs. I was a bit shook up from what just happened, so I didn't fall asleep right away. I eventually calmed down and managed to get back to sleep after about an hour. When I woke up in the morning, I saw Caleb sitting on the couch on the other side of the room staring at me. He said I should leave because his dad would be home soon. It was an odd way to end our sleepover, I remember thinking to myself. I thought about if Caleb... Or, or maybe Caleb, the good side of Caleb is telling him to leave before the bad side of Caleb tells him, you know, you know, is come before he comes after him, before he kills him, clucks him up. Jesus. Fire alarm. Can you just can you can you beep after I'm done recording? It's like it heard me. Dad even knew I was even staying over. Either way, I didn't feel welcome anymore. So I did what Caleb said and I left to go home. About two days later, someone on Facebook messaged me saying that they saw that I was friends with Caleb. And they told me that Caleb used to go to their school. He didn't warn me to stay away from him. He said Caleb was accused of killing another student at a sleepover. When the case went to court, Caleb was found not guilty due to a lack of motive and evidence. But the school Caleb was at didn't want him there anymore. I wasn't sure if I believed what that random person had told me about Caleb, but I did think about the recent sleepover I had. I thought about if Caleb really was trying to wake me up from a nightmare, or was he trying to kill me in my sleep? He was trying to kill you! It did make me feel uncomfortable at times, but after being told he was accused of killing another student, it kind of made me afraid of him. Kind of? I decided not to spend so much time with Caleb after that and only hung out with him in school. About two months later, he moved away and I eventually lost contact with him until a few years later. I saw something on Facebook about a murder in another town. I saw Caleb's picture and I read about what happened. Caleb managed to get a girlfriend and one day he went to her house to spend time with her while she was babysitting her brother. While Caleb was there, his girlfriend fell asleep as he played video games with her younger brother. She woke up to a woman screaming. That woman was her mother. Caleb's girlfriend went downstairs, saw her mother on her knees screaming. She then looked over at the game area where her brother and Caleb were. At least she thought Caleb was there. What she saw was horrifying. Her brother was laying on his back. Blood was everywhere. Oh God. But that wasn't the worst of it. His head was missing and Caleb wasn't anywhere to be found. They immediately called the cops and Caleb was actually caught roaming the streets with blood all over him, including his mouth. Caleb confessed to killing the little boy, but he also confessed to eating parts of him. Oh. One thing that they never found was his head. Caleb doesn't remember. Well, at least that's what he told the police. My ass he don't remember. He remembers every little detail. Jesus.
My name is Corey, and growing up I had a best friend whose name was Joshua. I used to have sleepovers at Joshua's house quite often, and in the warmer months, we would have campouts out in his back garden. What was nice was behind Joshua's back garden was a huge forest where we spent a lot of time exploring and playing. It was Friday, and I was with Joshua at his house. His mom said dinner wouldn't be ready for another 45 minutes, so he suggested that we went outside and play with Joshua's new walkie-talkies. So that's what we did until dinner was ready. Later that night, we were in Joshua's treehouse playing board games. His parents had already said goodnight to us. As we were playing board games, I heard a crackling static noise. I asked Joshua what that noise was, and he said it's just a walkie-talkie. He said it's probably Doug. I asked, who the hell is Doug? Joshua told me it was this guy that he met out in the woods, and he seemed really cool. Joshua had given him a walkie-talkie, and they'd speak sometimes at night. I asked Joshua if Doug went to our school. He said he didn't think Doug even went to school. Joshua turned up the walkie-talkie and replied to Doug. Now, when I first heard Doug's voice, he didn't sound like no kid. He did not sound our age at all. Doug asked if Joshua wanted to go with him to check out his gaming room. I asked Joshua what he meant by gaming room. He told me that Doug keeps asking him to go to his house with him. Joshua told me that Doug doesn't really take no for an answer and usually has to just turn off the walkie-talkie. Hey, anybody that, that, that says that, I don't take no for an answer, is a very... Got, watch out for that person. Dead ass. He replied back to Doug saying he can't go with him because he's in his treehouse and was about to go to sleep. Joshua then turned off the walkie-talkie. We spent the rest of the night trading Yu-Gi-Oh cards, playing games before we went to sleep. I don't know why, but I woke up in the middle of the night. I saw a light shining in the treehouse. I thought Joshua was awake reading comics, but when I looked at him, he was asleep. The light was coming from outside. I looked out the window of the treehouse, and I saw a figure standing at the edge of the forest, shining a flashlight up in the treehouse. They switched it off when they noticed me, pulled up their pants from around their ankles, and ran back in the forest. I woke Joshua up, and I told him someone was outside watching us. Joshua suggested that we go inside the house, and I agreed. The next morning, we told Joshua's parents that we slept inside the house because I saw someone in the forest. Joshua never told his parents about Doug, and I don't think he had to because Joshua told me he never heard anything else from Doug again after that night. Joshua and I both think that Doug was in the forest watching the treehouse that night. We both thought of many different theories of what he was planning to do. And honestly, none of those were actually good. I'm glad he never came up there. Yeah. I'm Brian. Recently, someone asked me if I believe in the paranormal or if I've had an experience that I felt was paranormal. I replied saying that I'm not sure if I believe in paranormal or not, but I did have a creepy experience. When I was nine years old, I had a best friend who lived across the street from me whose name was Maddie. On Fridays and Saturdays, Maddie and I had this plan where we would stay awake past 11 p.m. That was the time both our parents would usually be asleep. We would look out of each other's windows and we would use binoculars and flashlights and we would shine a light to each other's bedroom window and that would let us know that we're getting on the PlayStation 3 that night while our parents were sleeping. If neither of us shined a light by 11.30 p.m., that meant we weren't playing the PlayStation that night. It was a Friday night, and I stayed up until around 11.30, and I didn't get a response from Maddie's flashlight. I wasn't really tired, and I had already switched on my PS3, so I thought I would play for a little bit. As I was on the PlayStation, I noticed Maddie had came online. I sent him a message asking him why he didn't respond with his flashlight. Maddie didn't reply. I got up and I shined my flashlight into his room again. I still didn't get a response. Then that's not Maddie. Put two and two together. Put two and two together. That's not Maddie. If that's not Maddie, that's not Maddie. If she, she, he, I don't know. If they didn't flash the light, that's not Maddie. That's not Maddie. That's not Maddie. I went back on my PS3 and I saw Maddie had replied. The message just said, hello. This didn't seem like Maddie at all. I replied back asking if he wanted to play. Maddie replied saying, look at my window. 
I got my binos up and my flashlight and I looked carefully through Maddie's bedroom window. I felt a cold chill when I saw a black tall figure standing in Maddie's window watching me. I didn't know what was going on. If this was a joke or was he just trying to frighten me? Joke my ass! I didn't want to talk to Maddie anymore that night or play the PS3 so I switched everything off and I tried to go to sleep. I found it difficult to fall asleep that night. I kept feeling like if I looked out my window, I would see that figure watching me again. The following Sunday, Maddie called me and asked if I wanted to come outside and play. When I was outside, I asked what was going on with him the previous Friday and if he was playing a joke on me. Hey, hey, hey. After what I just seen, after what I just seen, I will never, ever, ever, ever talk to Maddie ever again. I promise you that. I promise you that. Jesus. I shit it breaks. I'll figure. Maddie looked at me confused and asked what I was talking about. I explained to him what happened and what I saw. He said that he didn't know what I was talking about. Cat. He and his parents were away for the past two days and they just got back that morning. I showed Maddie the messages I received from his account that night. After reading the messages, he looked like he believed me. Maddie then told me that sometimes in the night, his PS3 will turn on and off by itself. And there's been times where he was sure that he turned off his PS3 before leaving the house and when he returned, it was back on again. I don't know if what I saw was paranormal, but it still remains the scariest thing that I've ever seen in my life. That was definitely paranormal. Who is the title of this? Okay, so now, all I want to say is choose one, number one, choose your friends wisely. Two, choose your best friends with careful consideration, with Adidas consideration, please. Because not only do I personally not use the word friend lightly nowadays, no, wait. I use the term friend lightly. Oh. Oh, okay. What well, okay, what I'm trying to say is I don't throw throw around that, that word friend. I don't I don't use that word a lot, right? So when I do do it or when I do say it, best believe I've taken some Adidas consideration that we're gonna be friends. Now with best friends, that's a different story. You got to test, Jesus, you, you got to pass the Adidas test and the test, test, test. And once you do that, I think uh, everything is all good and love and thunder. Love and basketball. Love and basketball was a great movie. It really was. But. Hey, shout out to anybody that still has their best friend, you know, for like, for like, what seems like forever. And y'all friendship, y'all bond is still going strong, you know. Because I don't think best friends just happen overnight. Sometimes best, friend, best friends happen naturally. Because I've never been in a situation where I would verbally say, now we're friends or now we're best friends. It, for me, it just kind of kind of kind of happens naturally. But I'm I'm like. Um, 
whenever I have a best, like, I don't know how to really say it, like, you got, I will have more friends than best friends. And if we're best friends, if you cross me, that's it. That's wraps. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. I love you. My family.